Welcome to the James and Laura Chinwag with me, James Dellingpole, and my very good friend and sparring partner, Laura Perrins. Um, Laura, we've got so much to be angry about today, haven't we? Which is we, good. We have a lot to be angry about. I mean, I think if I was running a restaurant or I was, you know, a, a young budding actress, um, I would be apoplectic with rage but unfortunately a lot of them seem to be just going along with this which is which is part of the problem yes no i was thinking about that when you said when you said if i were a young actress and i was thinking actually no sympathy there really i i i think most of the theatrical world is is part of the problem well, i think they're, you, they're, they're did you see andrew lloyd Webber's statement no so, tell me Right. Well, I, I, I should have printed it out. It was again, it was the usual. It did start off with we're, we're, we're very upset. We're devastated. I mean, they've been open for like, I don't know, maybe 10 days, maybe 14. Remember, they will have spent a fortune getting all the theatres COVID secure. Right. So they, they've done all their silly stickers. They've done all their IT because I uh, because they, you can only book the tickets a certain way. OK, so they, they've already made a massive outlay on making all these theatres COVID secure. And then Matt Hancock comes comes around and says, sorry, we're going to close you. Busiest time of the year. So so Andrew Lloyd Webber goes, you know, yeah, we're, we're upset and it's and it's, it's bad. But you know what? I think it's the right decision. Because it's it's for public health, so uh, I mean we. Got he to... didn't say that. Yes, he, he didn't say that. Yes, he did. Well, because from Andrew Lloyd Webber's point of view, he he's all right, Jack. Right? I mean, he. I he, hope. The man makes money. I hope he, he loses he, every penny. He won't. He won't. He, he, the man loses makes money while he sleeps, um, and he's too terrified to say you guys are are you know taking a wrecking ball to 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 the arts and culture you know parking your views on his musicals blah 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 you know i'm not i, I there's one musical of his i really like and the rest of, i can leave um but it's just it's just outrageous and, and so if we can just talk about me for a minute because we don't talk about me enough um yeah, yeah. so i had only booked right all i wanted to do at christmas was bring the kids to two shows i had booked and they're small shows we're not talking name it so one was the Little Match Girl, okay, which is in, I think it was in Sadler's Wells and would no doubt have been just like people on stage that it, it, it's very arty and you, half the time you don't know what's going on. And then another one was for something slightly older, The Wolves of Willoughby Chase or something somewhere else. Oh, yeah. This like is all, well, I don't know that one, but this is all I wanted to do. We're not going to Ireland. We're not seeing grandparents. We're not seeing cousins. This is all I wanted to do. No. It took me ages to find them. It took me ages to book it. And the thing is that you have to remember, James, is that, you know, the people who act in these shows, right, for kids, they don't do it for the money, okay? I mean, they probably survive on bread and water. So they do it for the love of telling the story, right? They really mm -hmm. think they're reaching people's hearts and they enjoy each rehearsal and they enjoy each show and they enjoy connecting and they probably think, you know, I've made someone's life better. I've opened a window for a child who previously may not have thought a certain way. And then they've just crushed this. And it's not, and you know, they don't do it for the money. All they do it is for the love of doing the actual activity. And Matt says, no, you can watch Netflix for your whole, for the rest of the next three months. And these are all young people. And they, I would imagine, will be, a lot of them will be kind of driven to despair. It's like, you know, if we, when we were in our 20s and, and you just woke up and you just have this entire day. I don't think you should have forget how hard it must be for some people day to day. They wake up and, and they have hardly anything to do for their entire day. This is dangerous. You know, as I said, I could do the whole I'm all right, mate. I'm always super busy. We, I, if you have a young family, you're, you're OK because you're busy anyway. You know, but if you don't have a family and you don't have a job, these days are very, very long. You can't see your friends, you can't go to the pub, you can't even do your acting for the minimum wage while you while you live in some hideous flat chair for the love of for the love of your art. And these bastards come along and just say, no, even though you're COVID secure. Like these surely these these theaters, they're either COVID secure or not, right? The restaurants are either COVID secure or not. So it doesn't even make sense on their own logic. Why, why are you letting... That, it's ridiculous. That's the, that's the problem. 
um, yeah. the, the whole the whole business is a charade. It, no, it, I agree. It parted, parted company with the epidemiology a long, long time ago. In, in, in fact, probably um, when Professor Yanidis um, looked at the the uh, Diamond Princess cruise and realised that the the mortality rate, the IFR, was 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 much much lower yeah. than than the kind of the, the political establishment has decided it is. This is this is just flu, and 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 not even a not even the worst flu. It's a bad flu year, but it's no worse than twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen. And this is what really bothers me about this that. Those of us who are informed, those of us who listen to people like Ivor Cummins or or, or Mike Mike Eden or yeah. or Sinatra Gupta or whatever, know perfectly well certain things about about the coronavirus that it's 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 now endemic, um, pretty much. Although we've done a pretty good job of stopping it becoming endemic, or rather delaying the moment when it becomes an endemic by these ridiculous lockdowns, yeah. and we know that it is eminently survivable unless pretty much unless you were going to die anyway that that's that's what they mean by comorbidities isn't it you were you were kind of in the last chance saloon anyway yeah um and we know that um that they're just they're just now making it up as they go along i mean the latest excuse touted by matt hancock for putting oh, london in tier three was what that the uh, there's a new variant there's a new variant, which is what, which is what viruses do. They mutate. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's, when it, I saw that, I was like, I, I can't believe they're pulling the new variant trigger. And now, I, I just, you know, I, 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 I and, and then it's a bit. It's kind of hung in the air. I saw on Twitter by Van saying it probably won't get around the vaccine. Probably. And then some little journalist from LBC is like, ooh, that will strike the fear of God into people. And I'm like, well, I'm sure you'll help with that. I'm sure you'll help yeah. terrify the last few people who weren't terrified. Shame on you. I mean, who, I who was that? Who, who was the, the, the LBC? Uh, I mean, in fairness, it's Tim Montgomery who said the same thing. I, I forget. It, not, not a known one. Just some rant. You know, I, I don't even... I, I, I want to say... A what, ton was, what was Tim Montgomery saying? No, no, he was like, I'm sure... Yeah, he was with me. I'm, I'm sure you'll help strike the fear. Of, you know, this is what you've been terrorising people for months. You know, so... Yeah. Um, I mean, what... what he is like a stop clock. He's right, so he's, he's right yeah, twice a day. He, he's been he's been okay on the COVID thing. So he, he he's been he, yeah. he definitely he's been okay in the COVID thing. Look, I mean, what what can you say? I, it's just it's it's a disgrace. People should stop going along with it, but they will. Um, I, I I genuinely, really, my heart goes out for young people who are who are gonna. This is this is gonna be really tough. Christmas for them or, or other people who are going to be on their own, people who've locked themselves away for months. And again, you know, in time two, there's another little supplement. How can you have a safe Christmas? Don't hug your grandparents. Oh, and then well, while we're at it, and then another article on Sky yesterday, basically, do, so you know how they like to demonize the teenagers now? How, uh, dare, yeah, yeah, yeah. how they dare they even exist? You, you, you super spreading individuals. I'm like, you're demonizing the, your, your youth, your rising generation. What kind of society does that? You know, I mean, this is sick. And the way they had set it up as well, they were like, oh, spending time in, because like you, when we talked about going through words and how you dissect an article. So it, it, it set it up again. Um, you 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 spend time indoors at Christmas and young people hold, uh, hugging their grandparents. This is a Petri dish for the virus. And it's like you have turned the family home into, you know, a Petri dish, something to be something dirty, something where bad things exist, viruses and germs. I mean, this is this is the work of, of darker forces. I mean, this is it's a scandal. We've talked about this before. Yeah. It is it is definitely the work of the, the work of Satan. I, I just give you I give you the, the sort of the teenagers, well, the university age perspective. Yeah. Which is that that so as you know I've got I've got kids at university right now. Okay. And they say that uh, two at university and one is one is grown up. Um, right. And the the ones at university tell me that it it depends on who who your housemates are. 
Yeah. I mean, I heard one horrible story about a friend of my daughter's who's, I, I think, at, I think she's at York. And she's ended up in a house with complete bedwetters, you know, absolutely mask fanatical. Oh, and they wouldn't eat. They wouldn't let her go out. They wouldn't let her go socialising. It was extraordinary. Right. She had to. She had basically. She had to come home because she was being made so miserable. Yeah. Whereas, I have to say, um, my kids, <laughs> being being little darling poles, God, just God. don't give. Don't give a stuff. Yeah. They've been. I mean, you know, my daughter was was in London yesterday, uh, drinking in the Bluebird, drinking oh. Bloody Marys in the Bluebird oh, Cafe, I, making the most of it. Before, yeah. before, you know, Dad, is there a, is there going to be a, a a tier three? Yeah, I said, yeah, I'm afraid there is. Yeah. Uh, but they 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 think it's all it's all it's all bullshit. So it, it it varies. But I agree. The experience for, I mean, if you're in your early twenties, yeah. you should be. You know, I don't know whether maybe you're not allowed. I know the Catholic Church, but you should be drinking and, and shagging. I mean, that's that's the deal, isn't it? That's what. Well, you can do that's what you should be. You should, and and finding making your and mistakes. Find your future spouse, I think. Um, that's you should be finding your future spouse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it. I tell you, it almost would make me want to push the philandering because, <laughs> because, you know, you're the the fear people have of other people. You're just like. You, you need to get over yourselves. It's better, look, I can understand if a young person is like, okay, look, I'm, I'm going to live my life. But you know what? Maybe, look, I'm just saying I understand it. They say, look, I'm going to take my two weeks out before I see my grandparents. Okay, I can understand if, if as a matter of conscience, this is, this is what they would want. This is what they would want to do. But if you know you're not going to see anybody vulnerable for months and you still decide to hide in your student hall, I mean, you, 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 need, to, you need to get a grip. You know. Oh, but I think we I think we need to be careful here. Um, yeah. Look, I I don't think. Uh, by the way, I love the idea of, of 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 having sex purely as a gesture against as a sort of fu gesture against uh, coronavirus. I think that's a really good good incentive. Why not? That's not um, my official but, line. I just need to put that out there. No, no, no of course, of course not. I, I, that that's my job. I'm saying, kids, go and do it to show your contempt for coronavirus. Um, but what does um uh bother me is that. You know what you said just then. Fair enough. If kids want to take go into quarantine for two weeks before seeing grandma, hang on a second. Already, we are accepting yeah, the made-up narrative of the of a, of the tiny cabal, which, which is what it is. That's got yeah. hold of our government and the German government and the um, well, every government pretty much, yeah. apart from you know, they're they're even trying it on in Sweden, aren't they? They're, 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 no, there are there are these they forces. Are they going to capitulate in Sweden? I mean, I think I think not. Yeah, I mean, they are, the, they've got to be close. The bastions. Yeah, and oh, I know, I know. It's bad if Sweden if Sweden capitulates. It's 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 bad news. It's For, this is this is. I, I think I said this before. This is our World War Three. It's just mm. not as we expected it. It's not. It's not um, yet sort of battles between fighter aircraft. Well, I mean, fighter aircraft are pretty much obsolete no, now. It's not. It's no. It's not. But but this is this is this is China. Yeah. This is the this is the Great Reset. This is Agenda 20, 2030. and it is incumbent upon us to fight back now. Yep. Rather than rather than later, um, it's well, you know I, I saw that phrase that phrase the other day. Appeasement now, war later is 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 what we're doing now. We are just we are just making things much much harder. The more we accept this stuff, and they know this as well. Yeah, I know. You, you notice how the police are really clamping down hard on on any protests against coronavirus. They're yeah. fine if it Black Lives Matter because. Because the coronavirus knows if you've got a Black Lives Matter t-shirt t- 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 on, it doesn't get you. Nor no, does it mind no. if you're protesting about the environment. Extinction Rebellion, it, 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 it's, it's a very clever virus. It sees yes. those letters XR mm. or smells the patchouli or unwashed armpits or platted armpit. It detects the platted yeah. armpit hair. And it yeah. knows instantly that you are a trustafarian who, yeah. who wants to bomb the economy into the dark ages. So it doesn't attack you. But if you... If you are protesting against the government's draconian, I mean, unprecedented 
coronavirus policy. I mean, even during the Black Death, they didn't have policies like this. Well, they didn't um, need to, but you would have self-isolated, right, if you saw people dropping. How bad can a virus be if you have to get tested to know you have it? I mean, for exactly. God's what's wrong with you people? It's just... You never you, test health. It's just, it's yeah. just insane. I mean, why can't people see what they're doing? I, I just... Yeah, I mean, you can see the exasperation. No, but you're right in terms of not appeasing and fighting back. And then I'm always torn about, you know, how much fighting back. Are you just shouting into the into the silence? Because, you know, for, for when people say, I'll remain neutral, I'm going to go along with it. You are you are screwing over the true freedom fighters that will have that will have to come, you know, down the line. So all the appeasers. Who, who didn't take on Hitler at the beginning are responsible for putting all the 20 something year old men on the beach on Omaha, right? On D Day. Yeah, yeah. They had to do totally. that. They had to do that because you flipping, cheese eating, surrender monkeys wouldn't stand up to them, you know, wh when you had the chance. I mean, it, it comes in interesting. I mean, if we just sort of do some blue sky thinking, because I, I have a book here on my coffee table. You know, how bad would it have to get either sort of A, before people really start fighting back and maybe putting their jobs on the line or B, to say leave? Because I'm always interested to know, you know, I look, do you ever watch The Handmaid's Tale? Handmaid's uh, Tale? Yeah, a bit. So yeah, this I'm loving my marriage on it. All right. So, all right. Okay. Well, I, I do what's called a hate watch. So there are a few things that I will watch, but hate yes, doing yes. so because I just need to know what the people are watching, right? And The Handmaid's awesome. Tale... Is one of them. Now, of course, the problem with Handmaid's Tale is that the lead actress in it, what's her name? Oh, you know her. You'll know her. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that one, the, the one from um, Mad Men. Yeah, she's actually very good. So she can sell, she can sell garbage. So she's very, very good. But in the early series, right, of that, of that, it shows, um, you know, things are getting bad in America, supposedly, right? And, and they, oh, do you know what they did in Handmaid's Tale? Um, they transfer money from her account to the husband's account. So you can't use cash anymore. Can't use cash anymore. Yeah. No cash. Yeah. Right. And that actually is in the book as well. So, th and then she's fired from her job. So loads of bad things start happening. And then, and then it shows them trying to flee. Then, then the shit really hits the fan. And then they try and leave America to get to Canada. And of course he can't do it because he's only got a revolver because he's a left liberal and never got proper weapons and never got trained. So serves him right. Serves yeah, yeah, him yeah. right. By the way, isn't it weird they're fleeing to Canada for safety? Oh, yeah, but I mean, Canada is the kind of the yeah, yeah, yeah. belly of the beast. Margaret, Margaret Atwood is, is Canadian. So Amer America's evil and Canada is, is, is great. Yeah, but yeah. when I watch it, I always think, why did you wait so long? Like, why didn't you get out earlier? And it just ties in. So I'm reading, I'm reading, it's actually a child's book, but I'm reading Judith Kerr's um, When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit. I never knew she was Jewish. She, her family was Jewish. This is, she wrote Mog, The Forgetful Cat. Right, so, so her family was Jewish and the father was a well-known writer. And if he had left it a day later to flee Germany, they would have gotten his passports and they would have been shipped off. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I just, it's just interesting in that, you know, you're kind of thing, you're kind of sitting there, you're thinking, how bad would it really have to get before you thought, I, I need to, I need to get out of here. You know, it's, it's, it's. Yeah. I mean, but Laura, there's nowhere to go. This no. is the problem. Well, the, this is, this is, a, this is a global, this, the Great Reset is global. Look, you think about the places that one used to fantasize about fleeing to. Yeah. New Zealand. New Zealand been been colonized ages ago by Jacinda Ardern and her her woke easters. Australia completely cucked. I mean the outback's fine but the cities are full of I mean the cities are as bad as Ireland and you know how bad Ireland is. Yeah yeah yeah. Um yeah. Germany Germany gone. Uh not not necessarily free to Germany. Um No you never want to go it's, to Germany. Well, no, I, I I like Germany but but I'm not sure I want to I want to live there permanently. But then so so then you think well where traditionally well certainly during the last two world wars who has saved our asses and it's the americans america yeah. which is why i am so personally invested yeah. in in this election with, with with donald trump i still think that i still think it's a near impossibility that joe biden is going to be inaugurated as president because i think that america is not going to you know that all that stuff about 
the Second Amendment, all their, their love of the Constitution. They take their their checks and balances and their their, their Constitution so much more seriously that, that, that they, they value it more. That they, they value it more than we value our, our English common law and all the things that we've taken to, to, for granted up until now. And, and, and now we're seeing being torched in a, in a, in a trice by, yeah. by again, a, a small number of people. But I think the evidence is so strong that this election was stolen. Uh, I mean, for example, the Dominion voting machines, which magically convert... Um, yeah. Trump votes into Biden votes. Yeah. I don't see, despite the reluctance of the Supreme Court to get its hands dirty and mm. and and deal with this embarrassing situation, it is ultimately going to be a, an appeasement now war situation. The people are going to realise that, and they're just going to go, "Well, hang on, we, we can't allow this to happen because there's not going to be another. You know, well, what, in four years' you, time, what do you think they will do though? Because they they like, there's no Supreme Court route now. Oh, there is, yeah, yeah. There are there are Supreme Court routes. The the, the um the I, Supreme Court, it, it what it did was it sat on its hands. It said that the the Texas the Texas application had no standing. Yes. You know, it was a loophole. It was a loophole which no. it exploited to get itself off the hook. Trump's just gone and sacked his Attorney General, Bill Barr. Barr was absolutely useless. Presumably, he's going to appoint somebody who is more robust. You've got the. I mean, you have to. You have to get this stuff off the off um off obscure places on Twitter because yeah. you ain't, you don't get it from the newspapers. You don't no. get it from the Telegraph no, or the that. or the the Mail. Yeah, yeah. So there are things like uh, in Michigan. This is just to update you. In Michigan yesterday, um, one of the judges allowed one of the forensic investigative investigative team to publish their deep dive into the. Um, Dominion voting machines and the margin of error allowed in the um, in the electoral uh, in the electoral laws of 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 Michigan is something like 0.0002 something right and the actual margin of error was 65 percent so do the math I mean we're talking thousands of times more less reliable so these are these are things that and, and also, you've got to remember that any um, functionary of the of the of the state yeah. who allows who, who who gives this the nod and, and and says, you know, yeah, this is acceptable, automatically implicates themselves. I think criminally. I think they open themselves up to a minimum, uh, no, maximum, maybe five year jail sentence, but but uh, fines. So it's quite serious business. So the the upside, the positive positive way of looking at this if you believe all the kind of people on the internet yeah. it, on our side yeah. is is that this is one massive trap and that there are going to be a lot of people doing doing jail time and thank goodness because I, if this doesn't happen the people who are going to be running the world are klaus schwab yeah hillary clinton Mark yeah. Malik Brown, Lord Malik Brown, the very, very dodgy, dodgy chap ennobled by by um, Tony Blair. Yeah. Uh, did I mention George Soros? Bill Gates. Yeah. We're I talking. Know. It's 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 like a kind of club of of, of billionaire gangsters. It's, yeah. It's it, it's. I mean. It, it, I mean. It's the, scary. So I mean, the question is, oh, I agree with all of that, and we'll we'll you know we'll see we'll see how it goes. There's certainly there's a lot at stake, but. What I don't understand, what do we think is the very end game here? I mean, is it, is it Great Reset? Is it the vaccine? Yeah, yeah. Is this, you know, I mean, it is, is it both? I guess it's both. Uh, it why? is. Yeah, go on. Why would they do this? I, look, you you and I are relatively normal people in, yeah. the, in that we're not, we're not psychopaths. No. I think that that the people that do the, doing this stuff are genuine psychopaths, and and they think that they're the good guys. I mean, Bill Gates actually, ima- Bill and yeah. Melinda actually imagine that they're the good guys. And by I the way, another thing, thing, by the way, of course, is population control. So this is where you get even darker. So this is what makes me very nervous. They have been pushing population control for what a decade. I mean, they just have a big problem with the poor people having the babies. They really, 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 really get them. Oh. You know? 
So, um, yeah, I, I just, uh, why, why the, their involvement should always ring, should always ring uh, yeah. alarm bells. And he's all over. Did you see that clip of him on CNN? And he's like, you know, they're talking to him. The giveaway is they're talking to him like he rules the world, which I guess he probably does. And it's like, so how long do you think this will go on for, Bill? And he's like, well, I don't know, it might be another nine months, you know, we'll see. And maybe we'll get back to normal then, but maybe not. And it's, you know, the vaccine. And you're just like, what, why, what if, why are we talking to him, first of all? You know, it's the assumption that, of course, we should be talking to Bill. It's Bill. It, it's Bill. He, you know. I mean, it's just, yes. it's, it's very, very Doesn't worrying. Doesn't it show, by the way, how, yeah. how cheap, how cheap, how easily bought so many people and institutions are? OK, so Gates has poured gazillions into places like Imperial College, which, is, of course, was responsible for the, the dodgy dossier, if you like, yeah. the, the, yeah. the ridiculously uh, inaccurate computer modelling that, that, that tipped us into this this disaster in the first place but you think he oh, he gave three and a bit million i think to the telegraph yeah and the telegraph yeah. was bought for three and a bit million i mean well, how I can they how can they consider themselves a, a a newspaper anymore they they've they've given up all their integrity with that donation they gave up all their integrity they said okay you own our ass mr gates yeah and so three million that's you know, people people portray their own people a lot. And again, you know, bringing it back to the movie that always reminds me of that scene in Braveheart, you know, when they're about to win the battle and the nobles or something had turned and uh, and the guy and, and and anyway, one one of the, the barons couldn't believe it and, and the, the the head evil guy's like, you know, and they and others turned for a lot less. You know, they turned for a lot less. People can I be you see very easily. Very easy. You're, because you're Irish, you, you, you'd you like yes, Braveheart because it's attacking the English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I don't watch that kind of nonsense. <laughs> but was it, it's about William Wallace. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not about Bannockburn, is it? It's about William Wallace. Yeah. yeah no, I know. Wallace. I won't watch it. I, I just, I, I don't like the idea of, of, I mean, you know, we get it. We live it for real every day, don't we, with the SNP. <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, that's not... okay. That's that's okay. You know, it's it's another it's another divide there underneath. But it brings us. It can bring us to the Telegraph with that run in. So remember, like that last that piece last week. Who wrote that piece saying we should all surrender, kind of thing? And I and I told her she was a stupid woman, and then felt guilty. About oh it. yes, Sherelle sure. Jacobs. And yeah. you and I both felt bad about it afterwards because we were we we got very cross in the heat of the moment. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think you, you did. Didn't. I think. Uh, no, apparently, apparently we've established on another podcast that I'm um, I'm on the spectrum. People people said because because I, I don't have any filter, and 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 I said, do you think I'm on the spectrum? And somebody said, I've got two autistic sons. You are definitely on the spectrum. Anyway, <laughs> but I do have I do have feelings. I do have feelings of guilt, and and you, you know I don't like. I don't like shitting on allies, but at the same yeah. time, as I've said on another, I do like playing the re the role of the NKVD commissar yeah. at the back of the battalions, waiting to machine gun them should they not show sufficient yeah. zeal in the face of the enemy. But I think you know either you fight or you yeah. or you go home to mummy, but don't hang around in the battlefield, sort of and, getting and in the way. And sort of don't say it publicly. So we should explain this. So to the viewer is that. There was a piece in the article in, in the Telegraph written last week by yeah. Cheryl, I forget her surname. And Cheryl was, Jacobs. Yeah, and it was a bit like, you know, the losses, the losses for the lockdown skeptics have been so have been so great. You know, we need to we need to regroup. And also maybe we maybe uh, you're right in that this was the killer. Maybe we shouldn't dismiss vaccine passports so easily. And you're like, yeah. oh my god. You can you can argue about tactics, although you shouldn't do it in public. But to actually argue and, and sort of concede ground to these power yes. hungry, hungry nutbags, like what is wrong with you? So I tweeted, you know, you you stupid woman. And, and I think it's true. You have no idea how bad it could have been if it wasn't for the pushback we've given. And, and I think it's been significant. Um, and then, and then also there was the issue about the passport vaccine. And then I said, look, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't, I, I, I shouldn't have called her a stupid woman. I should have said it was a stupid article. And normally I, I yes, I, you should attack, love the sinner, hate the sin, attack yeah, the idea, yeah. the bad, bad, bad idea. But it was, but it was a really, really, really bad idea. Yeah, and it was, why 
Gresh even <laughs> writing stuff like that. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's, it's so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in a way you're proving a negative. I mean, it could have been, we, I mean, I think it's bad, but it, I think it could be a lot worse if you, me, and I think we're a small band of, you know, brothers, whatever, Peter Hitchens, just if there was no opposition, you know, you have to put up some opposition to people like Matt Hancock or we will be locked down forever. You know, these yeah, people no, are crazy. That's what they want. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, you need to keep an eye on them. I mean, they love power, right? So even if we're wrong, I say to myself, well, even if I'm wrong in the, in the end game and I am, a, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've lost it completely. I'm like, you should always keep an eye on people in government. All they want to do is exercise their power. And you need, and it used to be, you know, and the opposition, Labour don't seem interested in, in, in sort of curbing their power at all. So, you, you know, you need to keep an eye on these people. Otherwise, you don't know where you'd be. Yeah. It's, it's and, and, you know. Can I tell you what else has been really getting on my tits recently? Go um, on. And this is, this is, of course, this is part of the problem. I do not give a flying fuck mm. about articles about Brexit. Brexit is a complete, complete yeah. distraction. I'm it's like it's yeah. like all the all, all the conservative commentariat. I know. Pretty much, are, are are wanking on about. Sorry, but but they are writing pieces yeah. about. Oh, and will this happen? And and will he give away the fishing rights? Or will there be? No. Will we get thirty percent? Or yeah. and and it's Boris, and he's he's out there, and he's gone out there, and he's yeah. he's, he's dealing with Bun. Yeah. And you're thinking, hello, yeah. have you not noticed yeah. that London, you can't. London, the world's, the city of which it was said, when a man is tired of London, he's tired yeah. of life. This once thriving metropolis has yeah. been reduced to a husk. The businesses are going to be, may never recover. And here you are talking yeah. about a tiny trading agreement, which is going to make no difference whatsoever I know. I know. compared with what's happening now. And it's like, it's... No, we're, I agree. We're being, we're being played. We're being controlled. Yeah. And yeah. we're being... And, 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 and we've discussed this before. These bus businesses about, about oh, is it going to be tier three or tier, th tier two? Oh, are we going to get... Are we going to get gruel rations today, or are yeah. they going to give us a tiny teaspoon, a half teaspoon of sugar to yeah. to, to sugar our, 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 our gruel? It's yeah. it's wrong. It's completely wrong. We should just open everything up right now. And yeah. we are lots of people are going to be watching this, yeah. our, our special audience. But we are the we are the only release valve they've got. They can't they can't get this in the Telegraph or the or the the no. Mail or any of the papers that they relied on before to. To look after their needs, that there's nobody looking after them. Well, I mean, the, the same with Trump. That is amazing, though, that you said that about Brexit because I did look at your Twitter feed and I'm like, oh, James doesn't seem to care about Brexit, and I also don't, don't care. care about Brexit. It's really hard to get say, oh, we, we'll be able to buy all the bendy bananas now because you know, remember the EU, they 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 didn't like the yeah, bendy yeah. bananas, and now we can buy the bendy bananas. You can't go to the pub. What is wrong with you? People cannot work. You know, you can't go to a restaurant. Who cares about, I mean, you know, it just makes it such, also, I mean, in it, when I get into my very dark face, part of me thinks, are we being punished for, for the Brexit thing? Because, you know, Boris, the only reason Boris is in power is because people wanted to get Brexit done, including me, including me, okay, including me. And I'm like, yeah, it, yeah. It, are we being punished for this? Because if it was a trade-off, I would stay in the EU and end the lockdowns, although it's probably a false dichotomy, okay? It's a false solution. Oh, God, 100%. 100%. Like, I mean, you know, they didn't, they didn't want to come along and, as I said, trash our jobs and close the schools and destroy the city of London. I mean, they just, you know, like, it's so... What is... Yeah, what is wrong? Get, get over it. And it's just... I mean, Boris is never going to give them what they want anyway. This is the thing. You're not going to get your... Because he, he's too scared to go out with no yeah. deal. So I don't think that's going to happen. And he'll tie it up for another couple of years or whatever it might be. And, um, you know, I, I mean, you're, you're completely, you're completely right. And isn't it weird how they brought out the vaccine and then it became the deadline and then the new variant all seemed to happen at once. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a miracle. It's a I, mi think, I think just, let's just, just savor it again. The new variant. 
the I mean, brilliant. talk I, about I, that. That's that's not even dog at my homework. That is the cat at my homework. And cats never eat homework. It's that yeah. it's that implausible. It, it's they they're, they're, they're taking the piss. Oh, well, there probably is a new variant because that's what happens with the flu. That is what happens with the flu. And they chose this flu like thing for a reason. If you go to the real dark side, because they knew they could have their new variant. So they knew they could change the goalposts whenever they want. You know, I mean, it just depends on how evil you want. You know, they didn't choose something that you knew, you know, you couldn't manipulate. But no, no, it's a new, it's a new variant. So, um, uh, I mean, it'll be in June, there'll be another new variant. And supposedly the media at the press conference were absolutely outrageous. Uh, because I didn't watch, I couldn't watch it, right? I could because you just want it, you want to kill your TV screen. But um, again, all the BBC could ask, you know, they're still gunning for these Christmas regulations. Well, you've closed the pubs and restaurants. So, um, you know, do you really think it's a good idea to let, to let, households, to let households mix over Christmas? Well, then, also, shouldn't, they be, shouldn't no. they be closing the chimneys so that Father Christmas can't get in? Because otherwise, he's so, going to, I mean, can you imagine, super spreader. I mean, please, they're they actually running. They, they Supposedly there is an ad out there that has Father Christmas in the bed. Sick. Another ad terrifying children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, know. I mean, it's, 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 these people aren't well. These people are not well. It's sad, isn't it? That um, even with, with Beth, Ribs, Beth oh, Rigby out of the picture, I yeah. imagine whoever replaced her is similarly uninterested in asking questions like, why are you closing down the economy and destroying businesses and killing jobs yeah. in the name of a, of, a, of a virus which is no worse than the one in 2017, 2018? What's going on? Nobody's answering that question. What I don't understand, um, because I, I haven't been to any of these conferences, do they, are they only open to people who are going to ask tame questions which actually endorse the government's narrative? I mean, why... I mean, I why think- I think they're all, first of all, I think they're still out of the room and it's all, it's all done through Zoom. No, it's your usual people, Laura Watterface from the BBC and Sky. I know what's her face. You know, they're just, in fairness, I mean, I think the journalists themselves, again, I mean, they're, they're just hired guns. It's, all, it's coming from the top, right? It's coming from the corporate top, right? This is the line. Um, this is the, we've got to take the public health line. Why aren't the rules stronger? If you're closing pubs and restaurants, why aren't you closing shops? If you're closing shops, why are you letting people mix? You know, what, what, why are they even allowed live kind of thing? You know, beastly people with their beastly germs. And that, but if as a journalist, don't you just wake up one day and say, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like I have to resign. How big a story would that be? If Adam Bolton or someone, but they're all, you know, or Luke or Queensberg said, I actually don't agree with terrorizing the public in this way anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm resigning. I think there's, I I'm, think there's only about five actual journalists left, and two of them work for a conservative woman. Yeah. I mean, we are. This, you think about it. There's okay. So there's people who are sound on the culture wars. People like Douglas Murray does a very good job there. Yeah. People like who are very sound on free speech and coronavirus, um, which Douglas isn't, by the way, on, on coronavirus. Um, so you've got Toby Young. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You've got you've got Hitchens, who is absolutely rock solid on coronavirus, although he's not so good on kind of fighting back. And I don't think he's really connected the dots with regards to the Great Reset and stuff. He just doesn't he, doesn't I go there. Against it in principle, and I, I think that's fine. In a way, that's my position. I am just I am against it. In, it is wrong for the government to destroy people's livelihoods like this. Oh yeah, 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 sure, sure. But you've got yeah. to understand. I, I think to, in order to be able to, to be effective in fighting back on what's going on, yeah. you have to understand where it's coming from. You have to first ask the question: Why are they doing this? Yeah, yeah, and then you have, and then you come up with the answer if you've if you've started if you've looked underneath the rock and seen the creatures crawling crawling out. Yeah. What you realise is that it's worse than you could ever possibly imagine, and, and most people don't want to go there. But I'm thinking, who is actually sound on coronavirus, on Trump, on the Great Reset, on on the the culture wars, and it's pretty much you, you me, <laughs> Kathy. Yeah. Uh, who else is there? We are really, really alone, apart from apart from sort of left field people like Vanessa Beely. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm realizing that the whole of the every part of the establishment, 
from yeah. from the mainstream media, obviously the BBC, the government, local government, what else? I mean, the big corporations, the the legal establishment, they're all against us. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so how do we fight back? And the police, are, the police are against us as well. Well, because I, well, okay. So we're, we let's do the Supreme Court and the police. The first of all, the thing is. Because I was always, I was a defense lawyer. My people might think I used to prosecute, but actually I was always defense. So I spent a fair bit of time, I wasn't there for deal, but I spent a fair bit of time cross examining coppers, which I can tell you is fun, right? Because I'm sorry, look, I admire that they, you know, they, they genuinely do put their lives on the line, okay? And they are dealing with some tough people. But I'm sorry, coppers lie, they lie all the time. All the time. I used to get loads of bit, you know, it was, and also they love the petty stuff. So they like to police the small, petty stuff. So this, this uh. police, yeah. So policing the masks and policing the two meters and all that. This is right up their street or, you know, oh, you, you drove to the Lake District. Yeah, they love that. Uh, mass raping of girls in Rotherham. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, no, I have some. I there's someone not wearing a mask down the road. So, like, do, do you know what you what? remind me just then? Yeah. I, I I instantly thought of the U.S. Supreme Court. You know, like like the the republic is about to be destroyed because yeah. because a cabal of hard left people have have got these election these Dominion voting machines which which completely cheat the election and steal it away. You know, it's yeah. absolutely corrupt. And the Supreme Court said, oh no. That sounds a bit a bit spicy. I'm not going to go there. And, and you're right. The same with the police. They don't want to go to the things that really, really no, matter. No. Raping, mass raping of underage girls yeah, yeah. by by grooming gangs. Yeah, no, yeah. won't I mean, do that. It might all, be racist. This was all over the country. But you you don't wear a mask in the shop, and they are on you. They are so this this is this is really this is really really up their streets. That that's number one. And they not you, just by the way, Laura. They, yeah. they actually clubbed a woman over the head yeah. Yeah, the other yeah. day, yesterday. Yes. They, they, you know, cracked her skull. Yeah. That's what you get for, no, I mean, no, if you rape a, a, a 12-year-old girl, fine. Yeah, you yeah. know, you're going to get, yeah. ooh, get, get probably ignored for 10 years. But yeah, yeah. you no, protest okay. against the... Pu pu and they love public order offences, which I have to say were brought in by the Tories, by the way. So there's loads of, like, different public were order offences. By yeah. whom? Yeah, they were brought in by Michael Howard. Public order offences... Um, anything racially aggravated, the hate crime, really minor stuff. I remember like defending. Never trust a Tory. I remember defending a kid, and he was picked up on like a really minor public order offence, and and the the cop had completely made it up, like completely made it up. But the thing is, he had certain issues, and if he was convicted of that, um, it would have had a big implication for how, how he was cared for and his future education. I got him off, of course, but yeah. That, 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 that's the thing. So that's number, that's the coffers for you. And as for the Supreme Court, who I'm told didn't take Simon Dolan's appeal either. This is our Supreme Court. Yes. So I, I have always not been so much against the Human Rights Act as perhaps others on the right have been, because I guess I'm a lawyer. And, and that can be, you know, and I always think, well, it's handy to have, you know, because governments can get overreach. And maybe, yes, at the moment, it's, it's often seems to be used by people on the left. Um, but it's worth having. And they didn't even take this case. And I'm like, you know, if you're a rapist being deported, you, you your case is in the Supreme Court. If you're a terrorist who has to be, you know, uh, what was it, uh, under sort of virtual house arrest, you'll get a hearing. You'll get a hearing. If you're a criminal, you'll get a hearing. But if you're a law-abiding citizen who has his business closed down over the flu, no. We're not even going to listen to that case. I mean, um, what? Here's, do you and want also, me to really depress no, you? No, no. Also, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't look at the papers. I should have looked at So I don't know what they were, what articles they were using, but what they should use. The big article for me, when we set up our COVID crimes tribunal and we're prosecuting Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson, um, I think it's article two or three says you, nobody can be subjected to uh, inhumane and degrading treatment. And the thing is, that's absolute. So all the other articles are like subject to public health, yeah. 
subject to put on you. They say, oh, it's a balance, blah, blah, blah. But that article, it's essentially a prohibition against torture. But to me, walking around mandating masks is inhumane and degrading. Closing your business down is degrading. And that's absolute. And it cannot be balanced against, you know, a, a made up flu. So I don't know if he had that in there, but that is, that's the way to go. That's what I'm going to start think, Hancock with. Do you think we're going to, I mean, I, I obviously want you on, on that, on that that panel um yeah. do you think it's going do you think it's, it could happen is it possible i mean maybe in in i mean 30 can, really. time i mean it depends on how how much destruction they intend on on wreaking i mean at the moment of course they're buying everybody off with furlough etc that they're pacifying everybody with that but you know it 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 it, it depends. It depends. But I mean, it's, it's, it's genuine. I mean, people need to start talking in these terms, not defensive. Ooh, the tier three is, is kind of wrong. And ooh, yeah, I mean, I think yeah. maybe Oxford Street, it looks a little bit busy. No, you're guilty of a crime against your own people. You're guilty of treason. And when we're let, you know, and, and we're all we're, we're setting up our COVID crimes tribunal and people, you're 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 first in line. Get your lawyers lawyer up because you're in trouble. Yeah. You you've destroyed your own country. You're you're a disgrace. I mean, what can you say? They they have. I, well, I'm I'm very intolerant of of waverers. I I think I was. It's a bit like we we used the war analogy before. It's a bit like occupied France. So you get yeah. you get the sort of the rump of the population who go along to get along. So they'll try and keep their heads down. They don't want to get shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they'll ca carry on with their businesses. You then get the collaborators. Lacan, have you seen Lacan Blusien? It's one of my favourite films. Louis Mal. No. It's no. really, really good. It's yeah. about this nasty little sort of voyou who, who, who joins the, the milice. And the okay. milice are these kind of paramilitary organisations which work with the Germans to, you know, round up Jews, things like that. Yeah. And then you've got the resistance who are in a tiny minority. Tiny. Um, because who wants to get, yeah, who, who wants to get tortured and then, then shot? You know, it's... it's you and I are the resistance. If there's, a, there's, a, there's a few more of us, that, but there is, but there's, there's, there's lots of people out there who may not be active resistance, but, but look up to us, and you know that they, they, they realise that we're, that we're the good guys, and we're fighting their fight for them. Um, I'm very intolerant of people who get in the way of our, our fight by even. Even sort of tacitly acknowledging, the, 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 suggesting the government policy is is, yeah. is is justified. So there was a guy the other day that I instantly unfollowed on on Twitter, yeah. who posted that picture of of shoppers in Oxford Street, which is what made me think of it. Oh, and it said okay. something yeah. like, you know, yeah. um, this has got to be wrong. Like, no, it's not. This is normal people desperately trying to do what what they used to do in the old days. Yes. By the way, let me recommend um, if you haven't read it, um, it's quite hard to find on Twitter because um, uh, it's a piece in Off Guard. Have you are you familiar with Off Guardian? The, Off yeah. Guardian is. I've come across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. It's really good. An article by somebody. She writes beautifully. Right. Not bad. And it's. Um, hang on. Twitter always gives me a kind of special warning when I'm, uh, yeah. When you're on off This link may be unsafe, says Twitter. In other words, it's, <laughs> it's actually doing its job. Her name is Gillian Diamond. Just Google it. Look up Off Guardian. Yeah. Brilliant piece by Gillian Diamond. It's called Why This Campaign of Terror Never Outside Wartime Have Populations Been Subjected to Such yeah. Outrageous Assault and Battery by Government Nobody. Propaganda Machines. And she talks about Things like getting up in the morning and everything's normal in, in her house. Yeah. And then she has to go to the shops. And she used to go to the shop, shops lots of times for fun. And now yeah. she thinks twice. Because yeah. why would you not want to yeah. go this this weird mask world of these furtive, yeah. shifty, yeah. suspicious people? Yeah. And like I, I went into Waitrose in, in Stratford-on-Avon. Oh, Waitrose is the worst. Karen's... Ba bed, bed, it, it, it's fine in Daventry, but... but, right. but Stratford on Avon is 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 like it's like going to Tunbridge Wells or somewhere yeah. or, or 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 Exeter. I mean, they're all bedwetters. I think and, they're outside of London. I had to. Go yeah. To, I had to go all the way down to Dorset to be told off for not wearing a mask. 
I had not been wearing a mask in London for months and months and months. Went down to doors and all, I'm afraid the old biddies you should be wearing a mask. I was like, no, I shouldn't. With, with my kids, my dad. And I, it, 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 it's, 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 I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that because because I'm trying to decide where to where we're going to move to next and obviously it's a collaborative decision but but, but the man, the man uh, gets I'm, the final say sure as uh, a man of the house. I think I think that one should move to a part of the country where people are most likely to resist and I think that's the north I don't think that's the west well that's the, that's the that brings me on now I'm afraid if anybody is is listening from the north dear friends of the north don't blame me I I was tweeting yesterday obviously about how outrageous it was that London was going into tier three and I get loads of tweets back going you weren't saying this when the north went in tier three I'm like yeah I was yes I was and I was objective oh, to down back in March and I objected to the second lockdown and I objected to you guys going into tier three and also we I'm sorry but Londoners fund most of the rest of the country so even if you don't live here if you destroy the economy in London you're destroying your own country you're destroying your own you know some sources of income we I mean let's face it we keep the rest of you afloat so I mean I'll tell you where and this divide I'm very pro this divide and rule thing has been very effective by Matt Hancock in, because instead of the Northerners going, yes, the disgrace London's gone into tier three as well. It's all like, oh, well, now you know what it feels like. Like, what, what's wrong with you? What are you protesting? Well, I mean, I haven't done that. But yeah, but I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I, I think people can big up the North and the friendliness and all that stuff a bit too much. I, I wouldn't assume the resistance will come from there. I wouldn't have seen that. No, but we've had pockets. See, it's ill-reported. So, for example, right. when Liverpool, yes. the gyms of Liverpool, they, they, they resisted en masse. Yeah. Yeah. I think something like 80% of them stayed open yeah, to yeah. the point where the police gave up trying to find them because they realised it was a lost battle. Now, yeah. we should be having more of these little skirmishes. They're yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, and it's interesting. Just going back to the beginning, what you said about Andrew Lloyd Webber, where we know that okay, so evil billionaires are are kind of behind this, yeah, um, this great set. But there are lots of lots of people who are have lots and lots of money and influence, who it seems to me like Andrew Lloyd Webber, who are not doing their job. If you don't want to live in a world where where we, we don't have property anymore, if you don't want to have a live in a world where we're rationed, where we're discouraged from eating meat, where mm -hmm. we're effect effectively on a, on a, we might as well be living in China because of the social credit system were the same, where we have vaccine passports and stuff. Yeah. If you don't want any of this stuff, then why aren't you kicking your little, stamping your little feet and using your influence and bringing it to bear on all those people in the House of Lords with the MPs who are being absolutely useless at the moment? Yeah. Why are people not using their influence? I don't understand it. Why is it just down to you and me and and Peter Hitchens? And because I, I I think the narrative is very strong, and and currently it's like if you resist, then basically you don't care if people die, and the people die line, you know, it's it's so effective, but it's so dangerous in a way. You know, again, I mean, I read the Times, James, so you don't have to, right? Again, to keep an eye on them. And That's the editor, awful, isn't it? Okay, I know. Okay. I mean, the editorial is all like, I know it's kind of hard, but the first principle for the government to do is to preserve life. I mean, I'm not 100% sure on that. Is that the first? No. Principle? I mean, it's... it's Who made that rule? Defence of the realm. But I don't know if the first duty of them is to preserve life. And I mean, I, I'm not going to be... Too, and, and then I also... Melanie Phillips as well was in there as well. I mean, I, I, it, it's, it's so upsetting. No. It, it's so no, upsetting. No, well, I mean, look, you know that it's genuine. She certainly cannot be bought or sold at all. It's always absolutely on principle. She genuinely believes it because I, I just know her. And like her whole article was like, oh, it was all like, I, I mean, I can't believe how stupid the British are and they don't abide by any of the rules. And the only reason we're in lockdown, and I remember reading the sentence because I read it twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only reason why we're in lockdown is because people didn't abide by the rules. Your whole article hangs on that, and it's not correct. The reason why we're in lockdown is because either Boris was pushed by Valence, 
and Ferguson and the rest of the communists out there into yeah, yeah. putting us into lockdown. I mean, I'm just wondering how bad will it have to be before Melanie turns? I well, mean, you see, you know, yeah, I know. I, I, I think Mel Melanie's lost. And I know she hasn't been bought or sold. So I'm just waiting for somebody. Is it because you get so entrenched in your view, you can't turn around and go, I'm sorry, I was wrong? Because as I said on Twitter yesterday, nothing would have given me greater pleasure than when back in March, I, uh, I, people turned around to me and said, now, Laura, everything's back to normal. Weren't you a right nutbag back in March? And I would have been like, yeah, whoo. <laughs> so glad I was wrong. Don't listen to me again. That's no skin off I my totally agree. I'd, I'd much rather be wrong. I'd much rather this wasn't a kind of... The, the, I, I must mention the, the, the very depressing thing that I, I was trying to mention earlier, but you wouldn't let me get a word in edgeways because that's because you and Laura. <laughs> that's all right. The, the really depressing thing is this, that part of the calculation of the Great Reset yeah. is that they move so quickly that we're unable to, by the time we've seen what's happening, by the time enough people have become aware of the Great Reset and what it does, it's too late. It's too late to do anything about it. There's a, there's a piece never, connected with this. So, it's never the too reason, late. The, the reason I'm so on this stuff is because like, I wrote my book, Watermelons, 10 years ago. Yeah. And I got three quarters of the way there because the Green Movement is, is, is the prototype of the great reset i mean yeah. everything up until this year was about was about global warming climate yeah. change that and that was that was the the excuse for this supranational um rule uh, uh you know the, this new world order it was to save the world from the biggest threat it's ever known which of course yeah, we know yeah. is com complete nonsense and based on computer models like covid19 um there's a piece by um uh Ben Ben Pyle, do, do you follow Ben? He writes for us on on the website. Uh, oh yeah, Ben's Ben's made a very good 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 video, talking about how this this oh, what, no, I can't remember what, what they said was it that we all need to go vegetarian or something. But the point he made was that it's ten people on this committee, ten random people. Yeah. Well, they're not yeah. random at all. They're part of yeah. the the Extinction Rebellion uh, sort of uh, activist class. And yet somehow our policy, our government policy, our, our coronavirus policy is being decided by a handful of activists and power crazed loons who have nothing to do with what most of us think. Most, no, people, no. most of us are appalled by this. If we knew what was going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't, as I said, I think it's because they have sort of, yeah, it hasn't come with one big swipe and they've given you just enough to sort of get through and, and, they're, and they are paying people off with other people's money, money they don't have, that at the moment they're willing, you know, people are willing to, to, to go along with it. But, you know, I have seen a number of articles where, and I've seen it said, and, and it's so true in what you're saying, in that, um, you know, they say to tackle climate change, uh, we're going to have big changes to, way, to the way we live our lives. You know, it's going to be really, and coronavirus has shown that we can cope with that. <laughs> Yes, I was, yes. It's so blatant about it. And I saw, I meant to cut it out and stick it on my fridge. Hugo Rifkin did it, who is just, he's just, uh, uh, I know, uh, just actually gives yeah, me shivers yeah, down my spine. And he, he, he actually was sort of mocking, you know, Sam he, Leaf. He, had a, he had a kind of sarcastic mocking tone. He thinks he's funny, but he's not. And um, it's like, well, you know, all these, you know, you know, people like me and you, all these COVID idiots or whatever, you know, um, it, again, it was like climate change. We're going to have to change our lives drastically to tackle climate change. And, um, you know, coronavirus has shown that we can do this. And, you know, even if we if we can't, if they don't do it voluntarily, well, you know, we're just going to have to do it through coercion. And it'll be a shame if we have to, you know, basically said, these people are, are keep talking about authoritarianism. Wouldn't it be a shame if we had to prove them right? But, but we will, if it comes to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I must, uh, I must no. link it. Yeah, yeah. He basically just admits it, that if it comes I to think it, you should. If it comes to it, we will coerce you into this change. These nasty little fascists need to be exposed because that's and, what they are. And he, I mean, he, it's, he, it's a form he, of fascism. Yeah, he's part of the I'm all right, mate, gang. I mean, it's just it's just scandalous. But if we just and I, oh, by the way, I need to touch on the vaccine again, because I think it, it uh, fits in with the green agenda. So, you know that you, you shouldn't you shouldn't 
if you're okay if you're pregnant you can't get the vaccine at all right and if you're planning because i looked it up yesterday if you're planning to get pregnant within three months you shouldn't get the vaccine and remember there's two shots of the vaccine a month apart so that would take you out for like yeah, 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 for like four or five months. So it's all basically they're like, you know, don't try and if you want the vaccine, don't don't try and get pregnant, which, of course, is basically in line with the whole green agenda, because, you know, chil- children, yeah. children are bad. I mean, what, what was Harry saying? Harry and Meghan? It's like, you know, they sucked it up completely. Oh, well, you know, we'll only have two kids because, you know, to have any more. It's just terrible. It's so selfish. Yeah. You know, to want to yeah. have to work. It's just selfish. To want to go to the pub, it's just selfish. Sit at home and watch Netflix and buy all your stuff off Amazon. Then you, you'll be happy. You know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. But I'm hoping that I'll be uh, one of Megan's um, unsung heroes. I think, don't they have an awards list coming out soon? I think you're on Do it. They? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I'm on it as well. Yeah, I think you're going to be on I think I probably am. Yeah. I think <laughs> Megan loves me. Because, because I'm, I'm, I'm diverse, I think. Tell me, tell I mean, me, I'm diverse. I mean, they're, they're just there are no words for poor, poor Harry. No, 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 no. Harry. By the way, do, I, I'm right in thinking, aren't I, that you've watched To the Lake? No, you're TV. asking me that. You know, I hardly watch anything on Netflix. Yeah, but you've got to what you've got to what episode five. Don't don't skip episode five of To the Lake is the best answer to what's going on now. Okay, no, just I'll watch it. just it's watch it. And I find Netflix, you know, these people, they, they hate us and they hate your values. So I find it really difficult to watch any of their stuff. Same with, same with Hollywood. Uh, I mean... Do you know what? I was thinking about this. People say, rightly, that this yeah. is not, we're not living 1984. We are living Brave New World. The Great Reset is Brave New World. It's, it, it's kind of allegedly beyond politics. But one of the things I think we've got very much in common with, with Brave New World, which, which makes this year so weird, is that all our kind of Waitrose deliveries, all our yummy goodies, all our entertainment, it's, mm. it's gone like clockwork. All our soma is yeah. there for us. We, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like mm. they, they seem to understand on some level, as long as you keep um, giving them their, their little drugs of escape, Give them, yeah. give them their TV entertainment. Make sure they're, I don't know, they're uh, halloumi and and uh, well, harissa, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the harissa and yeah, uh, <laughs> and their waitrose essentials come through on time, and they're gonna. You can just roll over them, and it's true. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah. rolled over us. No, I know, I know. It it it's depressing. It's it's very depressing, but um, oh, there was something I was going to say there about about Netflix. Yeah, I would like to just turn it all off, but I I, I won't. Um, and then you look. Do you ever if you go on Netflix and you look at all the old movies? Now some of them are okay. So before the nineties were okay, and then some of them you're like the amount of garbage you have pushed on us for years and years and years. You know, just it's kind of weird when you see them in a list. And, and I just, I, I mean, I've watched nearly all of them and I just think, wow, I mean, you, you've just gotten away with, with so much. And all these actors, you know, they, they really, you know, they, first of all, they hate religious people. They hate Christian people. So it does mm-hmm. take me, a, I'm just like, why are you watching them? I mean, previous to now, I would have just compartmentalized it. But it's like, they really hate you. So why, mm-hmm. why are you, you know, why are you watching them? It's just, it's just, oh no, yeah, on a brave new world though, because um, in fairness, Ian Martin in the Times did something on this and he is okay. I quite like Ian. I have a soft thought for him. He's, he yeah, he's okay. Yeah, yeah. And he, he did call out this over reliance on experts and, and scientists, right? And, and they're incredibly exalted status now in the culture. You know, again, it's like, oh, you can't question this. Yeah, yeah. He's a, it's an ology. You're a scientist, right? <laughs> And yeah, in yeah. the beginning of Brave New World, there, I remember quite clearly, because, you know, the, all the hatchlings, I think all the hatchlings are there, yeah, yeah. you know, because it, it's not done the old fashioned way. It's the, it's the new fashioned way. It's all in a lab. And the scientist is like, oh, but you really know where you are. You know, you can really control them. And that is exactly yeah, yeah. what Tier we have. Tier one or two or three. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that is exactly what we have now. You know, all the scientists, Ferguson and Valence, and they're sitting in front of their computers and they got their graphs and they, they think they can pre predict what everybody does. And it's like, we, you really know where you are. You know, we know they're not in the pubs and we know they're not in the restaurants. They're in the houses and we can really control them now. You know, you can, because I just don't like the way humans, they, they're unpredictable. You know, they can do stuff. Yeah. And, and I just think yeah, yeah. we need to stop giving exalted status to scientists. It's, it's ridiculous. It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. Funnily enough, this was, you it's, see, a lot of the phenomena that I was, I talked about in, in Watermelons, which I which published 10 years ago now. Um, I, I sort of, I observed the phenomenon, but I couldn't see why it was happening. So, for example, I noticed that Radio 4, Radio 4 has this obsession and, and, and has long had this obsession with, with scientists as being a kind of an elite apart from ordinary mortals. And you've got things like incredibly tedious chap called Jim Al-Khalili does, yeah, yeah, yeah. does this boring program in which he, he talks to a scientist oh, and the scientist, you're supposed yeah. to you're supposed to marvel at the marvelous scientificness of the scientists and they've got and they've got those two wacky the, the the man scientist and the girl scientist although they're probably social scientists who do this isn't hey wow isn't science amazing and here's the latest news in science and it's we're being played again it's not it's not really about about the science it's about yeah. well it's about scientism it's yeah, about yeah, the kind yeah. of veneration of 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 their politicized science as this kind of, as this, it's the Marxism. One of the things that Marxism did was yes. try to give a kind of scientific inevit inevitability to actually their, their very spurious and dodgy scientific example, uh, um, ideology. So, yeah. so the idea that, that the collapse of capitalism was inevitable and yeah. that there were these things called forced consciousness. They invented this whole way of rewiring our, our brain, of thinking in a particular way, which was, um, uh, what, what's it called, dialectical materialism. Uh, it makes no no logical sense, but th that to believe to be a good Marxist, you've got to believe this this shit. Mm. In the same way that technocracy, which is what the Great Reset is about, wh what we're experiencing now, is about the idea that there are these people who know better than you because they've yeah. got this thing called science. Yeah. And uh, and but it's not real science. That's the thing. No. They claim to be following the science, but they're not. They're following the politics and and twisting the science to. Yeah. To support their political aim. Well, as you said before, that girl, what, Catherine M Mickey, who's the behavioral scientist? Susan Mickey, the, oh, the, the, who uh, sold her family's um, Picasso for 50 million. She's, she's a proper communist and she's out there wanting to cancel Christmas, basically. And, and it seems very angry. And it's Boris people. is going, yes, please, Susan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'll and, take you seriously. And today program have her out all the time. Absolutely all the time. But as we said before, if you can make something scientific, then you, you're not allowed to disagree with it because it's not political. We're not taking a political stance. This is, this is science. And, and, you know, if you, don't, if you don't go along with it, then there's something wrong with you. But, I mean, th look, this COVIDism and this safetyism, it, it's a religion. You know, it's a religion. And they, the mask is part of the special garments of, of, um, of being religious. And, you know, I mean, look, it's that, well, can, you know that... It also has a lot of currently this restrictions, actually. I don't really want to point this out. Have a lot in, in keeping with sort of more extreme elements of Islam in that you can't play music publicly. You can't sing publicly. You can't That's drink so alcohol publicly. You can't, if you're James Allen called, fornicate publicly, essentially. Or you can't fornicate at all, right? I mean, you have to cover your face. I mean, it, very good point. I like that, Laura. It, it's it. This isn't this isn't good. It isn't going to end well, you know. So I think people are are. I mean, it, look. What can you say? The fact that they've closed pubs is bad. I mean, people shouldn't have, underestimate how big a thing is culturally going to the pub for for for. Well, basically, Britain or Ireland is a really really big deal. Is a really big deal, and I wonder if they've done it again to kind of crush people's spirits or to stop any kind of organisation happening. Um, it's. It, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. And then, I mean, all of this, I and mean, we'll I think maybe we'll end on this, is they've just yeah. done this on these garbage PCR tests, which I think for their readers, our listeners, we should really explain why they're garbage in that they're running these yes. PCR tests. They come up with loads of false positives. And 
it's, it's, they're basically looking for tiny fragments of a virus and then they spin it like more than necessary in the lab. So if you get any, yes, the, yeah, go on. The more you, cycles, the, the, yeah. the, the more cycles they run the, the PCR tests at, the high, and, and these, these cycles are, they increase at an exponential level. It's not just like, uh, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. The, the more cycles, it, it's like 10 times rather than, rather than one notch above. And they're, they're running them at cycles so high yeah. that what they do is pick up fragments of virus mm. that your body may have, have, have um, your immune system has, has already destroyed. So yeah. they're testing for something that isn't a problem. You're coming up positive, mm. even though you pose no infectious risk to anybody, that you're yeah. not going to die, you're going to be fine. Yeah. And this is absurd. They're essentially pathologizing health health healthy people exactly. a, a functioning immune system yes. is suddenly something bad and dangerous yes. now w where will it end if that's how they're working this is and this is this is not science no and this is why they're going on infection rates so they're not really yeah. going on hospital admissions and even if they were you get admitted now when previously back in March, you wouldn't be admitted for it, right? They've lowered the bar for admissions. And I mean, the death rates also, I mean, are, are they're, they're not, they're remaining steady, if anything. And also they're labeling everything, anything with COVID on, if you, if yeah. you die and you had COVID within 28 days, that goes in the death rate. So the PCR tests are garbage. Your admission rates are, can't be compared like for like. The death numbers are also basically garbage because if you get hit by a truck but tested positive on your garbage PCR test, then you go down as a COVID death. The masks yeah, we yeah. know have been exposed as either not, fit, not uh, noticeably effective from the Dan Danish study. And there's a recent study that say might actually make matters worse. Um, so yeah, this, yeah. Is all, this is all public policy based on this science. When if you look at it, it's completely... It's completely, it's just utter nonsense. And they've done lockdowns on those. People aren't going to work based on PCR tests. People are locking their kids in self-isolation for two weeks on end on this. I mean, it's just, as you say, don't be arguing about the small details. The entire foundation is garbage, all of it. And on that note, um, yep. Laura, I hope you find, you know, I would offer to stage at my own house with my family the wolves of Willoughby Chase and, oh, you know, maybe with the yeah. with the, the spaniel acting as a wolf and the, the cat, which is quite large, being a wolf. But I just, I, I, I think your kids might be disappointed. Yeah, no, um, I mean, I haven't told them yet. I mean, I'm not saying that this is a devastating blow to the parents' house, but it's just, you know, it's one of these small things. There were bigger things that they've had to cancel. And it's, it's just, it's just sad. It's just. It's are we going to? Are we going to do another one um, between now and New this Year? This our last one. My kids are off tomorrow. Oh, between yeah. Okay. So I mean, we can wish the viewers happy a uh, Merry Christmas, and we'll. We're missing uh, Merry Christmas, yeah, everyone. We'll go from and, there. But um, look, 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 let's see if we can slip one in. Um, yeah. Because I know people are hungry for it. Right. Um, to go with their figgy pudding they're saying bring us laura and james and bring us laura and james doesn't scan <laughs> quite well does it you're not allowed to uh, anyway public, you know. you're not allowed to sing in public you could you, you've just infected your wife james i have infected. i have yeah okay right well go out and, and infect everybody everybody yeah. um and um let's hope next year is better than this one yeah right okay. bye okay. Thank you, james bye